Webflow is marketed as a low code and no code tool, but in my opinion, you need to know a lot more about code in order to use the tool to the full potential. Yes, of course, you can go ahead and use a template. You can go ahead and create a simple website without <laughs> writing no code. But the moment when you start looking at Webflow as a visual development tool instead of a no code tool is going to allow you to open up that much more doors and to actually bring everybody doing front end to Webflow. I'm founder and CEO of the Flow Ninja Studio. And over the years, I've been a marketer, designer, developer. And like since 2015, I was in Webflow. And there are many mistakes I've made during that process that I wish I've changed sooner because it would help me create my agency a lot better. It would help me to become a much better Webflow developer in the long run. And that's why I wanted to go ahead, go ahead and share three big no-nos when doing Webflow or using Webflow as a, uh, as a tool. My biggest oversight was that I was looking at uh, Webflow as Figma. So all of my initial client projects were actually done directly in Webflow, which I'm not so proud of. And don't take me wrong, there is like maybe top 10% of Webflow developers and designers that can do this, that can go ahead and develop directly in Webflow and make sure that everything works. But if you're just starting out or if you're on a trajectory to become a better designer or just a better Webflow developer, it's probably not gonna be the right path. So in my beginnings, all of my designs were constrained to my Webflow development skills. So if I wanted to go ahead and develop something more complex, I couldn't because I didn't have the capabilities to do so. So I compromised on the design. If I wanted to add some custom functionalities, I was usually compromising those based on my development skills. Same with interactions, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why the moment when we opened up Flow Ninja as an agency, we realized that we need to have their separate departments. So we have designers being designers. I mean, like we have a design team and then we have a Webflow development team. And even though our designers know basics of Webflow in order to become better designers, because that's gonna be empowered, like knowing how front end and everything like that works is gonna empower you to become that much more better designer. And also from the developer perspective, they know or like a little bit about design in order to love designers because you always know that there is that love and hate relationship be between designers and developers. But on the other side, they still specialize in their areas. So that's why designers are like able to understand the business impact of their design. They're understanding marketing, they're running design workshops and stuff like that versus developers who are learning JS, Node.js and other custom functionalities to make sure that anything we think of is possible to do in Webflow. My second no-no or how the, however you want to call it uh, when starting Webflow was that I was limiting myself to Webflow forums. So all of my search queries were actually me typing out how do I create an RI calculator in Webflow? How to click a button on page load in Webflow? How to create a countdown timer on Webflow? And like as all of my use cases were a little bit custom, like I could find maybe even many of those solutions on Webflow, but I needed to adjust them a little bit to the client's needs. The problem occurred that I spent days and weeks actually trying to figure out how to adjust them, hiring external developers to make sure that that works. And like all of that was, all of that process was a mess. And basically the moment when I removed my queries from Webflow and started searching for actual code-based problems, like HTML, CSS, and more importantly, JS, that was when I was able to go ahead and learn the most. So then afterwards, my search queries were how to get an input value with JS, how to store an input value with JS, how to do math with JS. And then if I was doing a really complex RI calculator, I was able to go step by step by step by step by step, by step decompile the whole RI calculator, write everything, learn more JS in the meantime. I mean, it was not the greatest JS uh, experience ever. So like wh whoever is a professional JS developer, they're probably gonna puke when they see my code because like it doesn't have comments and it's way longer than needed. But that in the beginning, that allowed me to go ahead and start learning JS and actually go into a direction of exploring what else is possible to do in Webflow. And that's why also doing uh, search queries, how to click a page button on load with JS and then maybe writing code pen GitHub next to it to see how have other people solved these problems outside of the Webflow platform and then bringing it in is gonna allow you to go ahead and solve more and more complex problems and it's gonna allow you to rely on Webflow for almost any development you need to do for your clients, for your projects or anything similar. And then the final thing that allowed me to have a lot of sleepless nights, so that's, that's not the greatest one, was that I was trying to deliver everything in a day of, or less on, or in a few hours or less. Even myself, I'm guilty of recording videos like create a landing page in Webflow in 15 minutes. There are other community members doing the same, like maybe Webflow is sometimes doing something like that. But all of those projects are not actual client projects, are not actual 
projects, like maybe for your software or for your company. And that's why in order to run an actual project, the last 10% is usually the 90% of the time you actually spent on finishing everything, including, I mean, going through accessibility, going through QA, client feedback, gathering real content, doing integrations, doing many other stuff that is maybe so abstract when you see a website and you see, okay, it's all shiny. We have 20 pages. It's everything great, but it falls apart on different browsers. So it's actually important that you be way more realistic with timelines and start giving longer timelines so your products can be better and that you can deliver much better experiences for clients. Or if you're hiring an agency to do work for you is going to be that much better to be realistic, maybe like what you're expecting from the platform and like from the agency to allow you for a better experience. I mean, like there are cases when like in, in our agency, when there is an emergency, we can do something really, really quickly, but that need like the marketing team with a client that we're working with needs to be on point every single day or like that day, they need to be responding in five minutes in order to make that happen. Our team is working longer and the whole process is maybe a little bit stressful, which for every single project, it's not going to be so beneficial or so useful for your career. There are going to be maybe some rush projects that you're going to be taking on for your clients to make sure that they can deliver something like in a day or so to react to a situation. But in the long run, giving longer timelines has allowed us to finish everything in the timeline or less, which is always better than actually being late and kind of maybe having a misconception and not the greatest client experience, I would say. So if you want to learn a lot more about Webflow, you can visit our website flow.ninja where you can learn more a lot more about Webflow with our guides. You can go ahead and read our blogs. Or if you're looking to hire an agency doing work in Webflow, you can download our five-step checklist to running a successful Webflow project so you make sure that your next project is a success.